<laughs> the official, the official podcast, podcast, official podcast, podcast, official podcast, 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 podcast of the waterfront capital of Texas. We run in this. Let's go. I'm on a boat. I'm on a boat. Everybody look at me because I'm sailing on a boat. I'm on a boat. Weekends on the water with Jordan Davlin of Jet Surf Houston and Scene Magazine publisher John Ennis. That is right. This is Weekends in the Water, and we're coming to you live from the 4,000-square-foot Jet Surf Houston studio and showroom along the North Shore of Clear Lake in the heart of the waterfront capital of Texas. My name is John Ennis, and as always, I'm proud to be joined by Army veteran, extreme water sports competitor, and Jet Surf Houston founder, Jordan Davlin. How goes it, Jordan? What's up, John? How you doing tonight, man? Man, doing excellent. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday, It's brother. hump day. It's hump day, baby. <laughs> Time yeah. for another show. That's it, man. Absolutely. Super excited to, to come on air tonight, man, and, and talk about the fun stuff going on next week. Um, yeah, dude, we are... T minus, uh, what is it? One week. From, One week. From the, the largest indoor boat show in the country, the Houston Boat Show. Man, I'm excited, dude. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's really, we've got two boat shows back to back coming we up do. here. And Absol- you're going to have booths at both of them, I, I believe. am. Yeah, I am. Wow. Yeah. No. So, uh, yeah, that obviously, you know, the, the bread and butter, the big show is the Houston Boat Show and NRG Center. They're tag team this year with the, the Houston Auto Show. It's going to be a big, big, big event. That's January 25th to the 29th. But like John said, uh, there's been a show that's been kind of building up in popularity um, and getting a little bigger every year, the, the Conroe Boat Show. I think it was the late Conroe Boat Show, and then they renamed it this year to the Conroe okay, Boat Show. Okay. And this, don't get me wrong, I think it's been at different locations in the past, but now they're at the Lone Star Convention, Convention Center, Center. That right is next correct. to the airport in Conroe, I believe. So, yeah, we're super excited to be over there as well, and that is February 3rd to the, the 5th. 5th. Yeah. Correct. And on the 2nd, you can actually go for a casino night. They're going to do a preview preview event and uh, they're doing a little fundraiser giveaway, and you know you can, you know, have some cocktails and uh, do a little do a little gambling for some for some uh, some items, and um, and then yeah, they'll start the show the next day. So that should be exciting. That's my first time to do that show, so we're looking forward to that as well. Yeah, it looks like a very exciting show from the outside looking in. I'll admit I've never been to the Conroe Boat Show. Uh, you and I made a trip up, you know, in the area yeah, and yeah, talked to, you know, yeah. we went to buy a, a couple of boat dealerships and they were all gearing up for it. They were. Yeah, yeah they were so, excited, uh, man. Yeah, they got all their new new equipment and, uh, you know, new stuff coming in. So, uh, yeah, if you're up in that area and you're in the, the boating business, I think you're definitely going to be a part of this. So Right. And, and just looking at their website, you know, I'm going to put quotes around this. But, okay. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Conroe then, Boat Show, quote, the largest new and pre-owned boat show in Texas. Un- yeah. End quote. Yeah, that's uh, we might. <laughs> that's, ha- we- that's quite a that's quite a statement. Yeah, we might have to you know check on the the validity validity of that. But um, I think because the pre owned pre owned might maybe, be the angle. You know, yeah. yeah, I think uh, Houston Boat Show is mainly uh, which is much larger. You know, right uh, it's- by, by the huge scale. Even even being split with the auto show now, but maybe not as many pre owned boats, and maybe they're really pushing that that pre owned stuff out there. So who knows? We'll, we'll I'll find out more on that. Yeah, but- maybe the fact that the Houston Boat Show is combining with the auto show, so it's not strictly you know now it's the auto boat of show. So so maybe they think, well, you know, maybe the Conroe yeah, show is, is I, now the biggest boat show. I, you since know, it's not an auto show. Also, I that don't know. that gets tricky. Not just with this, but with anyone that claims, you know, the biggest, the best, the number one. I mean, it's right. it's real technical. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know, yeah, largest palapa on the bay. But, uh, you know, there's yeah. I mean, yeah. from from all my years doing advertising, uh, you know, I was always careful to put in quotes whenever uh, a client or or, or an right. interview subject would make a statement that I was how like, legit is this? I'm yeah. gonna let that's coming from you, not me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's coming from you, not the publication. Because I mean, really, you can you can almost say anything you want until somebody you know like questions it or, or you know has some reason to you know not like go legal, but just be like that's not true this is why we are i mean they they they, ha- they would have to go back and forth but but uh good for them for you know like i said putting together a big show i think they're super excited absolutely they got big shoes to fill with the Houston boat show being right before them and uh you know so um yeah it's exciting stuff and uh you know they're different markets. Uh, I was actually just talking to who will be on our show next week, Kenny Lovell, uh, the president of the Houston Boat Show, and we we're just kind of talking about some of the different demographics in the boating areas. How up in Conroe, it's more you know a lot of pontoon boats, a lot of wake boats, you know some some uh, the low lower um, 
you know, bottom fishing boats, you know, for like bass and sure. stuff like that. And then you get down here, you know, you've got a lot of power boats, you know, and you've got a lot of sailing. I yeah. mean, just sailboats, cruisers, you know, and yeah, uh, cruisers, you know. small yachts and stuff like that. Huge and, sea rays. Yeah. And then yeah. you go to Galveston and that's where you've got just charter boats and fishing boats and, and everything, you know, kind of geared for that, that deep, deep shore, uh, you know, off water fishing. And so, uh, not off water, but deep water yeah. fishing, and so um, yeah, it's just it, different crowds and different things going on, and and uh, the boating market's different all over Houston. Houston's so big; I mean, it's such a huge city, and uh, yeah, each body of water has something different to offer for sure. Well, I guess we'll start with uh, since the Houston uh, Auto Boto Show is first. Um, you know, January twenty fifth through 29th, as Jordan said, one ticket gets you in the two great shows. Yeah, man. If you you know, get them this... now, fifteen dollars instead of twenty. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. So, so I don't know when fast. the cutoff is. Maybe it's up until the day of. But uh, twenty dollars at the show, unless you know somebody like me. I'm kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, or yeah, fifteen dollars online. So definitely get your tickets now, and it makes it easier too. You're not waiting at the ticket booth. Um, you know, and, and so, yeah, it's, it's a lot easier just to get them ahead of time. That's right. Buy early and save 25%. And I I assume you just go to houstonboatshows.com. Yeah. There's a link right there in the front, buy tickets online, go ahead and reserve your tickets. That way you don't have to wait in line. Like, you know, like Jordan said, you can just go and, you know, go straight into the show. Yeah, and they man, they've just got like a ton and ton of vendors out there. Um, you know, I'm not going to name them all off, but just like to name off a few that have been like loyal to the show every year um, that are out there. Obviously, I've been out there for many years now. Uh, you know, I'll name off more of the boating stuff. I mean, you got Action Boat Center is going to be out there. Anchor Marine Insurance. Uh, you know, Bass Pro Shops, Cabela's Boating Center is going to be out there. Um, Cabela's was a sponsor of my race, so yeah. got to give them a little bit of a shout Absolutely. out. You got Big D Marine, uh, Boats, etc. Boat with Me Inc., Sea uh, Do, and um, uh, Yamaha. They'll have their jet skis and their new pontoon, you know, jet ski boat thing that they've got going on oh, out nice. there. You got a lot of fishing stuff. You know, you got Carefree Boat Club, Castaway Customs, Castaway Rods, Coastline Marine. I know you guys have heard of some of these these companies. Again, there's a few that aren't necessarily boat related, but that's how these conventions work sometimes. Sure. I mean, for the most part, 95% is boat related. And some of these companies you guys have definitely heard of, like Down South Lures. Uh, you know, these are like super popular fishing companies. You got Freedom Boat Club, Fishing nice. Tackle Unlimited, Galveston Yacht Basin, a lot of yacht sales. Okay. Marine Max is back in the mix this year. I think they might have stepped out during the COVID time. Sure. Um, Jeans Power Sports, they do, you know, all sorts of power sports, but they got some jet skis and some different boats and stuff set up out there. Uh, HTX Water Sports, you know, friend of mine, definitely give them a shout out. Oh, look, Jet Surf Houston. Nice. Hey. No, but uh, <laughs> so, yeah, just going down the list here. Uh, Kevin Boat and, and Motor Repair has been there like every year I've been there. There's a Marine. They're big in the area. They sponsor some different events. LMC Marine Center, Lynn Sailboats. Oh, my God. If you haven't seen Lynn Sailboats off the freeway, he's primetime location right off the freeway, you know, around that 610 or even closer into the downtown area. Right. Uh, apparently he's just, you know, he's been at the boat show for 30, 40 years wow. and he's got that office right off I-45, you know, so it's not on the water, but he, I mean, he's, he's got a really good location there. Um, Mercury Marine, um, uh, almost done with the list here. Uh, a friend of the show, Oasis Dock Supply and oh, Oasis yeah, Marine Construction. Buddy. Looks like he's got a triple booth, nice. so that's exciting. Um, you got Pier 105 Marina, Plashlights. That's a local company, um, oh, right. down here at the that. end yeah. of El Camino. Dude, if you, I mean, they've, they've got the brightest and the most quality high-end lights for anything in the boating i mean they do more than boating but like they can definitely take care of any lighting needs you have for your boat so nice yeah give them a shout out they're another friend of the show and uh i know oars from saltwater recon is very close with them and i was actually hanging out with oars today at the uh festival festivals and events seminar down in galveston you know so galveston you know obviously we're, we're big fans of galveston uh, you got Rinker's Boat World, Ron Hoover Marine, uh, Sea Lake Yacht, Seato Galveston, and SMG Boats. Me and John were hanging out at SMG the other day, That's like true. you mentioned, on yeah. the north side. Um, I don't know if M2 Sports is going to be there, but M2 Sports is one of the people we were talking to. Uh, you got the Boat Lift Company, um, Texas Teague. Of course, Texas Parks and Wildlife will be there. Texas Marine, um, Towboat. 
U.S. Clear Lake. If I didn't mention that, I might have mentioned the other CETO. There's like the two C companies. Right. Which, hey, I got to say, give them a shout out. I mean, for whatever it is, a hundred, two hundred bucks a year. Uh, if you've got a boat, you better have a membership to CETO or or, or um, what's it called, uh, the Towboat US, because they will save your butt oh, yeah. when you're out there and, and they are the one to call because no one else is going to come get you. So you might as well just go ahead and be a member of that for sure. It's better to have a membership and not need it than to need it and not have a membership. 100%. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty much like the main businesses I know personally or I see there every year. So shout out to all those companies and, and good luck at the show next week, man. We're, we're looking forward to uh, being next to you and hanging out for the for the, that five days. You know? Right. Yeah. Yeah, because you know the boat show. I mean, it's it's you know it's it's you know we we will always call it the boat show. Obviously, you know, this is the second year now that they've combined with the Houston Auto Show. You know, kind of yeah, something that was yeah. brought on from COVID. You know, just a way to keep the show alive. Um, but uh, you know, we talked to uh, Kenny. Uh, actually, we you know the last two years we talked to him at the uh, at the boat show in 2020. I guess that was three years ago now. Which is we, such an exciting episode. Yeah, I mean, yeah, really, that was our, yeah. the first our launching of this our first official podcast. Official ep- yeah, episode. a live yeah, uh, yeah. live live episode from the Houston Boat Show uh, right before the world changed. Yeah, literally. <laughs> and yeah. then we got a chance to talk to him last year right after um, you know the the, the first uh, boat show with the uh, with the auto show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did no, a so, call in with yeah, us. Yeah, he did a call in. He might have been actually uh we've done a few call ins since then, but I think he might have been our first call in. I think so. He was I like our was. test our yeah. test call in. Yeah. And it worked out great. He sounded great. We didn't have any inter- right. interruptions. Um it was great. It, I mean, yeah, so. actually I almost argue that he sounded better than we did. He might have, yeah. So if you guys ever uh <laughs> funny how that works. Feel like you, there's something you need to promote in the boating world, definitely give me or John a shout and yeah. you know, if you're not able to make it down to the studio, you know, we, we can get you on the phone. So yeah. Yeah, and the Houston Boat Show, I mean, obviously, you know, we kind of talked about the watercraft, boats, and personal watercraft, obviously, all the land toys and towables, you know, RVs, ATVs, UTVs, motorcycles, golf carts, I mean, it really is kind of almost, they've, they've kind of added, like, the hunting and outdoor to kind of go along with the boating and the fishing and all the marine accessories, and, you know, and then, and then they even kind of, I've noticed from past years, you know, they get into a little bit into the outdoor furniture, home improvement, I mean, they're, anything that kind of, kind of works fits the waterfront lifestyle you know whether it be uh you know maybe a couch and you know uh, and some outdoor furniture or maybe even a a fire pit you know to uh to yeah. to, 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 to put in your you know your outdoor area overlooking the water i mean there's right yeah, yeah there's you know, a you, lot of options a lot you of, gotta have some furniture for your dock area or right. you know for the boathouse or over by the pool you know it's all water related yeah you know? yeah, yeah what's think, the point of having a, a a backyard with a view of the water if you don't have a place to sit down and crack open a beer <laughs> and you know <laughs> and enjoy it, right? Oh, uh, and speaking of beer, they will have, uh, like they've been doing the last couple of years, um, they've got not a beer tent, but yeah, like a, a beer garden type Yeah, like type a, a beer thing. garden yeah, type yeah. deal. So, yeah, they, they've got, uh, you know, um, some Texas beers. You nice. know, I think Shiner and a couple others. I'm not going to name off who's there. I don't want to, you know, make NRG mad. But they've kind of upped their selection. Um, yep. They've got a few more beers to pick from now in an area where you can kind of hang out and, and have a beer, not just the normal food court eating area so right. kind of like john said a nice little beer garden i think kenny was super proud of that so yeah i know that was kind of a big push for the 2020 show i think that was the first year they added it and uh yeah i'm glad to see that they're continuing yeah, it, right yeah, i mean obviously absolutely. with the popularity of craft beer and all the the great local breweries here in the area it's awesome to uh you know to to have some representation at the uh at, at the boat show absolutely man absolutely and, you know, and, and like we said, it's, uh, you know, January 25th through the 29th. The 25th is a, is a Wednesday. So Wednesday through Friday, the show hours are 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Saturday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. And then Sunday, the final day, which is the 29th, that's 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Yeah, that's what I thought, 10 yeah. to 6 on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, and you'd be surprised. I mean, you know, it used to be 10 days, you know, which is... That's which, true. Which is yeah. so long. You would get people come two or three times in those 10 days. Um, I've seen people come twice uh, in the five days. And, you know, believe it or not, they may not make it until 4 o'clock on Sunday, but they'll still make it out there usually. And sometimes that's when the deals are, or, you know, sometimes you got to be there first to, to get the deals or have anything left. Sometimes when you show up at, you know, five o'clock on Sunday, you know, that's, that's when you get the best deal. You know, some of these guys have it figured out. They've got their own style or it's just, you know, their work schedule, but, uh, but you got five days to get out there and plenty of hours to do it. So definitely come out to the Houston boat show. And I guess this year they're going to have the, uh, the fish back. 
I believe, um, you know, with the with the, um, the the bass tub. Yeah, they do the big bass tub. Yeah, yeah, that's super neat. That guy that does that's uh, yeah, it's a uh, professional angler Chuck Devereaux. Yep, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So he'll demonstrate a a range of techniques for casting and retrieval in a giant five thousand gallon, forty foot long, nine foot tall bass tub aquarium, fully stocked with rock stumps. And dozens of live fish. It's pretty impressive. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's cool. So, and it looks like uh, looks like there'll be roughly four shows, four shows per weekday: uh, twelve thirty, two thirty, four thirty, five thirty. This is specifically the bass tub schedule. So that's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. They actually add in a six show, so it'll be eleven, one, three, five, and seven. And then Sunday there'll be three shows to finish it strong: eleven a.m., one p.m., and three p.m. That's for the bus. Bass tub schedule. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. And, of course, the uh, my understanding is uh, the Texas Parks and Wildlife will be real, well represented at the show. Um, always, always. Yeah. yeah. Along with other um, marine, you know, enforcement, um, I think that uh, – if not the Galveston County or, you know, the, the Houston police, you know, um, they may even have like a fire department. So there's there's definitely some law enforcement that gets involved, gets out there and tries to give back and, uh, you know, bring out the cool equipment for people to look at and shake hands and let inform people on, you know, what they've got going on and what they're doing for the community. So yeah. awesome. Yeah, definitely. And, and I just by looking over this, if I needed an ex- uh, a real call to action to get my nine year old son there. It's uh, they'll be pet a baby alligator and meet the Texas State Park Rangers from Brazos Bend State Park. So okay. apparently the Rangers from Brazos Bend State Park will have a baby alligator on site and available for petting. Oh wow! Yeah, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. so, that's- so that that that'll be attractive to a certain demographic for sure, including my nine year old son. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, he wants a a pet alligator. Actually, he wants a. Com- <laughs> <laughs> he wants a Komodo dragon. I, I've conv- I finally convinced him that they're not actually, you know, that's not a legit pet that you can. Yeah, have. yeah, you yeah. can't, you <laughs> yeah, can't have yeah. that. Unfortunately, yeah, but, uh, yeah. Now he wants an iguana, but hopefully, uh, just petting a baby alligator might hopefully satisfy that for at least a couple more months. Yeah, because no, uh, yeah, 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 I, don't, I think we're. Uh, I don't think we're going to be adding any reptiles to the Ennis household anytime soon. I was going to say, you, are you going to get him a bearded dragon? No, or that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what he wants. <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's, a, that's what he wants. That's the next step. He's been asking for that for about three years. Okay. And yeah, so far, yeah. it's a no-go. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, Mama gosh. Ennis says no. Yeah, huh? well, yeah. And, he, and I'll be honest, even Daddy Ennis. Well, <laughs> yeah. not to go too deep into the weeds, but uh, yeah, yeah. we actually found a nice little uh, uh, pet turtle for him, but he didn't exactly prove he was, of course, you know, this probably was when he was six. But, uh, yeah, he wasn't up for the responsibility of a free uh, pet turtle, a little readier slider. So we figured that we found for free at the park. Um, so I figure if, if he can't handle that, maybe uh, investing in a – a bearded, you know, dragons probably not in the car. Yeah, yet. no, yeah. They're, they're not. That was yeah. kind of the test. He didn't realize it at the time, but that was a test. Maybe in a few years. Yeah, so, yeah. So yeah, like hopefully said, in a few years he'll be on other things. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> then maybe that too. Yeah, yeah. But no, you're right. I think it, it takes you to a certain age point where you really are at a at a point to be able to take care of yeah. a, an animal. You know, right? Well, Whether it's it, a turtle or a dog. It's all the same. Yeah. yeah well, so. my understanding is bearded dragons live to be. You know, they live a while. Of course, if properly kept for it. So uh, you know, we're kind of explaining to him what are you going to take it with you to college i mean yeah know, yeah because like, it's this not is, staying this, here yeah, yeah this is know. not a this you got to really plan this out man yeah <laughs> no exactly <laughs> that's hard to grasp you know as a youngster so maybe uh petting the baby alligator uh that the the rangers from the brazos bend state park have maybe that'll at least uh satisfy him for a couple of days yeah weeks. absolutely yeah so absolutely. that's kind of cool yep and then of course as we mentioned the conroe boat show yes, and sir. uh yeah, I mean, really, it looks like a pretty impressive list. You know, there are th- more than 35 brands of boats. Um, more, You know, they, they'll have well over 100 boats. Um, and, uh, lar- you know, largest discounts in three years, according to the website. So, you know, I, I know that, um, like cars and a lot of things, you know, there, there was kind of a shortage, kind of supply chain issues. So maybe, Yeah, inventory was hard to get. Yeah, you know? so maybe yeah. now's the time, right? And also, one thing that kind of caught my eye is um, special financing rates available only during the weekend of the Conroe Boat Show. Oh, yeah. So my my guess is there'll be a guy there that'll hook you up with a good rate, you know, yeah, on a boat. Yeah. So uh, an extended warranty is available, boat for every budget, 
Every boat type. So uh, special financing rates available uh, during the weekend of the Conra Boat Show. Of course, then as we mentioned, that's and February 3rd through 5th. And let's be honest, John. I mean, most people buying boats, they ain't paying cash. You know, uh, right. these aren't cheap toys. Right. And, uh, you know, they're, they're amazing, you know, uh, pieces of equipment to have, man, and, and, you know, the family to utilize. But uh, 9 out of 10 people are going to finance them. Sure. So if you've got an in-house financing or someone there that's, you know, doing deals and trying to approve people, that's huge for, for sales. I mean, I think that's really the bread and butter for a lot of these boat dealers is, you know, they, they've got to have the, the power and the Internet coming down from the ceiling. They can't be messing with Wi-Fi because, you know, right in the middle of a, of a credit application, they can't have any hiccups or problems. So I think that um, it's all about that financing and, and working that out with the customer. And so uh, I think that's really, really huge when it comes to, to getting those sales, you know, offering that financing. No, that's great. That's great. I mean, it looks like they're willing to do whatever it takes to get you in your boat. Well, yeah, you know, it's not like a car. I mean, you can have a 30-year note, you know, so it's uh, it's pretty interesting. Right. <laughs> you can get that that $200,000 boat, you know, down to so much per month because uh, they'll, they'll do a 30-year on it, you know. It's Man, I'm just looking at all the brands of new boats at the Conroe Boat Show. And as you kind of mentioned, obviously Conroe, uh, you know, more lake style, you know, I mean, I mean, you know, so so it's it's a lot of ski boats, a lot of boats. You know, kind of more for for yeah, fishing of, and, a lot and of tow, tow boats like tow wake, boats wakeboard for, tow boats. Yeah, right. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're towing the wakeboarders and the the new uh, the wake surfing and all that's the the big the big thing right now, man. Everybody's wake surfing. Wow, that's, that's the new deal. So yeah, no, it looks like a, it looks like a great list of uh, you know, of, and actually they're gonna have some some actually Sea Ray's gonna be there apparently. Uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, Nautic Star. World Cat, Chillwater, Regal. I guess I'll name them all now. I've started right. Avalon, Axis, Barletta, and you can correct me if I if I butcher any of these. Uh, Malibu, Bennington, Everglades, uh, Yamaha, the Chaparral. Yeah, right. Yeah, Chaparral. Uh, I mean, I've seen yeah, that. I've yeah. seen that for years. I used to build websites for boat brokers, and uh, although I think, uh, of course, most of those back in the day were Sea Rays and Carver. And you know, so Baja, yeah, and, kind of the yeah, big, yeah, yeah and then yeah. this the go fast boats back in the early 2000s, late 90s. Yeah, you don't see too many of those at these shows anymore, yeah, you know, yeah, I think yeah, there like was scarabs, a, and yeah, I remember, yeah, those <laughs> are wanted, those everybody are, wanted a scarab back in the day, yeah, no, those are a little more niche and a little more custom these days, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, Boston Whaler, you know, like, yeah, you know, which you know, the, the, the saying goes, you can cut it in half, right. Boston Whaler, cut it in half and it'll still float. Is that, is that what yeah, they that's, say? Yeah, that's what we, that's, as kids, that was what the oh, saying was. Wow, My, yeah. I had a buddy who had a Boston Whaler, and uh, he, of course, we never actually took a saw to it to test that <laughs> out. <laughs> Although, it yeah. probably came closer than we should have a oh, couple of times. I'm sure, yeah. yeah. Much to his parents' dismay. But um, yeah, <laughs> so uh, yeah, quite a quite a lineup of vendors that are going to be coming out to the, uh, to the Conroe Boat Show, Lone Star Convention Center. 9055 Airport Road, Conroe, Texas. Yeah, I'm, so it's right there on, I think, the, it's like a loop. Yeah. It's on the north side of Conroe that goes up by the airport, and it's and the entrance to the airport road. So as soon as you turn on airport road, the convention center is right on the left. And yeah. then if you keep going, it takes you down to the, the Conroe Airport, which is really, Sugarland and Conroe Airports are, you know, they're you know, not regional, but they're they're pretty big oh, private yeah. airports at this point. You know, they have a lot of traffic coming out of there. Yeah, I think that's pretty close f- to the original location for uh, uh, Southern Star Brewery, which has since uh, upgraded and relocated. It's also not too far from uh, the Bartlett's Distillery. You know, yeah. so yeah, 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 right there. You know, Conroe, a lot of stuff going on in Conroe. Oh yeah, it's it's expanding like crazy right now. Yeah, really, the Conroe and the Woodlands are basically touching now, right? Yeah, I mean, they, yeah, they really just, are. It's yep. all one big suburb. Yep. I, I used to call Conroe South Dallas, but I guess it, we'll start calling it North Houston now. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah, no, it's definitely uh, it is up there, man. I've had to make the drive a few times from Galveston to Lake Conroe. Wow, and it's just hope you don't hit any traffic because it's it's an hour and 40 minutes solid like you know yeah. and and you're right it's all still Houston Galveston to to Lake Conroe yeah. Baytown to to Brookshire I mean or not, I mean yeah yeah that, literally yeah yeah out you're of, right, go out of east to west like, yeah uh more like Mont Bellevue right to, yeah. to Brookshire yeah. Lake Conroe to, to Galveston it's insane yeah yeah, I can't call Brookshire East San Antonio anymore either. No, yeah, it's not even. West Houston. I, it's like connected to, <laughs> yeah. to Katie and Katie. Katie, you know, and Katie yeah. yeah. 
and Bridging corridor and all that, yeah. And you used to consider Mont Bellevue Beaumont, but it's really not. It's no, more. It's, it's in the Houston. East Houston, yeah. Yeah, man, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're blowing up. <laughs> yeah, the whole area is exploding. Yeah, I mean, I, I just uh, I, I've been spending some time down um, in kind of the Manville area south of Pearland, and just seeing the master developments going on down there. I mean, just Houston's exploding. I mean, any any available land is being developed with master plan communities now. It's it's yeah, our whole area is growing. It's such a healthy, uh, diverse, economically diverse and and diverse area. And, uh, you know, so many people, the amount of -of out-of-state license plates I see. And, and of course, I I embrace it. Some people get pissed when they see out-of-state license plates. I don't even pay attention. I don't care about that stuff. I can't help it, but I just notice them. I mean, there's so many out-of-state license plates and so many people are coming here, which is awesome. I mean, I'm all for it. Obviously, as a as a realtor, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, for sure. But, I, I yeah. like the diversity too. I like you know being able to say that we're as diverse, if not more diverse, and in an international city than New York at this point. Right. I think there's over a hundred languages like actively spoken in Houston. I believe. I it. mean, they, you know, there's that's that's pretty wild. Yeah. There's parts of town where you have to speak that language. I mean, I'm yeah. kidding, but like it's you know, I mean, it really is that big and diverse, and um, yeah, there's a lot going on. You there know? is. There is, yeah, yeah, international business and people just coming here for for all the things that you know, the, the medical center and just right. all the things that yeah. that Houston has to offer that other places just don't. I mean, in the world, so yeah. that's what brings in you know these people from from all over the world. True, it's exciting. Yeah, I, I embrace it. I like it. You know, I mean, yeah, the traffic sucks a little bit, but but I think it's a, it's a, it's a cool town. <laughs> yeah, and there's some growing growing pains right now with the traffic, especially down I-45 heading into League City, going south. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. it, it gets a little nasty right around. It'll right, be yeah. it'll be nice when it opens up. Yeah, because right yeah. now I figure there's about eight lanes that are blocked. D- that the, maybe it, even more. Exactly. It, it's yeah. it's fascinating because you're like, wow, this. How does this even work at all? Yeah. And then you see like what the potential is going to be. Once and you're they like, open that up, it's going to be. If there's any traffic sailing. at that yeah. point, I'll I'll it'll blow my mind because it seems like it's going to be a open highway. We're yeah. Gonna have like ten lanes to pick from going south. Like yeah. no more congestion going to Galveston or coming out of Galveston. <laughs> It's going to be kind of like on the west side where I know kind of over there on uh, I-10 West is the widest highway in the world. In, in the world. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's like 18 lanes or something Oh, it's crazy. bigger than that. Maybe bigger yeah, than that, it, like 26 it, lanes or It's something. like 32 or something. <laughs> yeah, it's I like, believe it, man. It's like seven on each side, and then it's like the two... And then maybe the there's HOVs, an HOV, yeah. so that's like 15. Maybe a tollway in the you, middle. You, you've yeah. got like three, uh, <laughs> three feeder like lanes or three or four feeder lanes and then there's like even like a side access i mean it, it's it's insane when you look at it on the map it's like holy crap yeah you don't even think about it till you really start counting yeah the access road the feeder road i mean th- those sound like the same thing but there is like two separate things going yeah. on and uh it is like crazy wide yeah, yeah no it's, it's crazy it's, yeah and that's kind of what 140 uh, uh i-45 is looking like you know heading yeah south now. no this yeah. is i think going to be the the next biggest chunk of freeway yeah. in town it has to be no no we're we're blessed man we're a lot of growth uh you know yeah. and uh and it's you know and, and a lot of uh a lot of working on the infrastructure and widening the highways because we we do we are a uh we're, we're a driving state people in yeah, texas drive yeah, we yeah. you know we we're yeah, everything's, you know, we drive everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, some cities, they walk, they ride bikes, they take yeah, trains, ma- buses. Mass transit, like we don't, yeah. We just don't do that. Nah, not so much, yeah. Gotta, I mean, you, you got to have a car. Yeah. yeah. I wrote an article, you know, for the Bay Runner magazine back in, gosh, that was like 2003, and it was, uh, it was about bringing monorail, connecting downtown to Clear Lake via monorail. And, and the whole, the, the lead sentence starts is where you, you, you know, you're up in town and you're high rise. You call the uh, call one of the. There used to be three uh, dry stock, uh, dry stack uh, boat marinas here. Now I guess there's really two. I think if yeah, yeah. I know the park side's gone, but uh, you know right here at what's now uh, you know Marine Max, where, yeah, you know, yeah. the former Endeavor, yep. former Market One. It's like hey, hey, uh, gas the boat, put it in the water. I'll be there in thirty minutes, and I'm gonna hop on the monorail down the Clear Lake. Oh yeah, my yeah. god, yeah, that would have been sweet. Yeah, that would have yeah. been sweet. But uh, you know, and, and they built some light rail in Houston, which has had kind of mixed results. I think there's a uh, seems like there's uh, some kind of incident every other day. <laughs> Yeah, they they've had uh, unfortunately a, a few fatalities and yeah, some car and lots accidents of car accidents. And, yeah, yeah, you know, but well, uh, they broke one of the main engineering rules. If you're going to have a rail system, you don't have it on the same plane as pedestrians and automotives. You know, why why, why 
Yeah, you know, it's, it's like little... it's supposed to skip beyond all that, right? You know, be yeah. elevated or something. You know, or don't, underground. Don't be... yeah. yeah, it's not supposed to go together. Yeah, You're so right. that's yeah. the problem. You know, cars and, and literally pedestrians. I think there's been a surprising number of pedestrians run over by the light rail in Houston over yeah. the years. Yeah, yeah, which is pretty sad, obviously. It is, but uh, of course. yeah, yeah. And I'll I'll admit, sometimes I'm driving around the medical center or kind of near you know Energy Park and. And I don't exactly understand, how, or even downtown now, you know, because it does expand. No, nobody does. Yeah, don't. it's not, not exactly clear to me, you know. Unless also, you live there and you yeah. drive that route every day, you don't get it. I don't. mean, there's literally lanes that cars and the light rail share, which yeah, makes no, no yeah. sense. And I then you, you, then you literally you <laughs> you go left and you're literally crossing the tracks, but you, it's just a light. That's I mean, it, <laughs> yeah. it, it gets gets a little. I wonky. saw I saw a show and it was uh, engineering disasters, and and in Houston's light rail was was Are labeled. You an engineering disaster. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, wow. So, yeah. yeah. They sh- we should have stuck with monorail. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. Or something or elevated highway or something. Yeah. But, you yeah. think about cities like you know like Philly or like Boston. I mean, don't they have like? Yeah, they have the it's, L, right? It's, it's like elevated. Above, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. Or Chicago is uh, when I think of you know risky business. You know the movie Risky Business back in the day. Yeah. yeah. And I guess it's quite an engineering feat. But if you're gonna spend the money, I mean, just do it right. Yeah. You know, I, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, right. Oh, interesting. But Houston's still awesome despite the uh, the uh, engineering disaster of the light rail system. Yeah, they've just never been able to figure out the mass transit deal. Besides yeah. just widening the yeah. freeway and, and I mean the bus system's pretty effective. I know my wife, whenever she gets a jury duty, she takes she she prefers just to take the bus into town. Yeah. Drops her off right, you know, like a block from the courthouse, you know. So that works out pretty well. Um, but, uh, yeah, but yeah, I mean, so the, the Metro, the buses, I mean, the buses are big here, parking rides and everything, but yeah, uh, without, I mean, the parking rides, they're not bad. Yeah. If they didn't have such nice parking rides, the bus system probably wouldn't be as good, but they true. do have these like, you know, substation parking rides and you know, it does work you yeah. know, for, for people that commute that way. But we, we definitely are not a mass transit city Yeah, by the, you know, I mean, we, we like driving around in our, our cars, but I believe you can take the the train the 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 system in Houston light rail the light rail to the Houston boat show that's true you can yeah, it goes yeah. right by there so yeah. yeah you actually can use that if you're going to the Houston boat show yeah so, no you're right it's um, right right if there you don't want to fight yeah. parking or pay for parking that'll definitely get you yeah, there. that'll get yeah, you there goes, for sure it goes right by there yeah so, yep. that's correct yeah that's correct. I don't know. Well, yeah, man. Um, so this will be your how many? This will be how many? How many years for you at the Houston Boat Show? Oh, uh, I can't even count anymore. Four. No, four. Yeah. <laughs> no, I can count. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it'll be the fourth show. So we did. Uh, you know, I I was just just late. I had just started jet surf. Um, in uh, like. I mean, a fish. It was like the beginning of, of 2018, but we weren't like you know. I, I guess they do. The boat show in January, so I didn't like yeah. I didn't have everything in order quite in time for 2018. I, I went and scoped it out at the uh, I hadn't been in years. I was living in San Antonio for seven years, and you know, so I hadn't been in a while. And I went and checked it out that summer. They had just brought back the summer show. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and I checked it out for the summer, and I said, "Man, you know, I got to do this." And so I did it in 2019 in January. I was able to make it, and then we did 2020. And then COVID happened, and they were doing the summer show. I didn't do the 19 summer. Um, I don't remember why. I, it, was, it was limited on space because they don't take up the whole arena, or I just couldn't justify it, or I just paid for the other one or whatever. But uh, I did the, the 2019 winter in January, and then I did the 2020 winter and then they were. I was going to do the 2020 summer, but they shut down the summer due to COVID. That's right. Yeah. And then they shut down 2021 winter due to COVID, and then they shut down, shut down 2021 summer, and then they brought it back in 2022. Last and we year were there last the year, and that, that was my biggest booth yet. So, um, so this will be the fourth time. This nice. will be my fourth show, um, in whatever five or six years or whatever it is. But um, yeah, no, we're excited. This year our booth isn't quite as big, but we're on the main row this time. Okay. And we got we're like uh, our row is not double sided; it's like a skinny row. So I'm on the main row, and it's it's a ten by thirty, but there's people walking by both sides. Okay. So it's not like you know what I mean. Like you, yeah. you can you can intertwine and, and catch me from both from both uh, rows. Normally you'd have to get a corner or book both sides of the row like I did last year I had six booths and we were on the corner so you know we were we were accessible from both sides 
but normally you wouldn't have that unless you bought a big space like that. This year, we had to downsize a little bit, um, you know, but like I said, we, we're on the main row, and, and you know, I think it's going to be plenty of space. I think it's going to work out good for us. Awesome. So, awesome. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm excited. Um, hopefully, we can get the news crew back out there. I, uh, You know, the year we did the show in 2020, I think I was featured on four different news programs. I'm not surprised, man. I mean, yeah, you, no, you know, was, I mean, was, what's, what's cooler than a self-propelled uh, surfboard, man? Yeah, I it mean, was, it was a good year news-wise. Um, I think the boat show had me on. Uh, we went into the studio for into the Fox Studio. Oh, cool! And um, you know, I think what is it, Fox Twenty Six? Yes. Yeah. yeah, we did the Fox Twenty Six in the studio, and then we had like ABC and another one at our booth, and then we had a. Uh, Man, I, 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 I don't think it was Telemundo. Um, they're gonna get mad at me. It was the, it was the other one. Oh, like Univision, maybe? Yeah, it was, okay, yeah, yeah Univision yeah. or what? Yeah, yeah. So, because nice. I remember, I was like, he came over, and I'm like, you Telemundo, and he's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was, it, yeah. So it was Uni- Univision, and um, you know, and they're both huge. Obviously, they're they're major in Mexico and have a big footprint here. I mean, oh, absolutely, we have a, yeah. Such a big Hispanic yeah. community. And it was really funny because, uh, you know, I don't, I don't speak Spanish. And um, we had to get a, a friend that was working at a booth, a few booths down. I remember that, yeah. And uh, he actually sold kayaks. But uh, we were like, hey, man, you know, throw this shirt on, dude, and give, give it your all. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, he came over, man, and, you know, he, he did his best to, to answer some of the questions. And, uh, yeah, he did an amazing job. So we were able to get on uh, Univision because, you know, otherwise – it's got to be in Spanish, so it wouldn't right. have worked out. So he kind of saved us in, in that regard, and it was a lot of fun just kind of throwing that together last minute. And so, uh, yeah, it was a good time. Awesome. We, we weren't featured on the news in 2022, unfortunately, just still due to COVID. Um, you know, I don't even know if it was 100% COVID, just how they worked out the schedule, you know, with the PR. Um, they came in prior to the show opening. Okay. So in, instead of, like, interacting with the people and doing interviews and walking around with the crowd – they came in with no one in the building. I mean, I think they even did it like unless you were there or like an early vendor. I don't even think it was open during the vendor hours. Like, wow, you know, we can go in there. Say the show starts at eleven, we can go in at nine. They came in at like seven thirty eight in the morning, and they they did their filming, knocked it out. They had a couple, you know, things they were featuring, and and the PR lady I think handled, you know, um, you know, talking about the the different equipment and the different boats. But this year, I think they're doing it where they're they're doing it with the audience again, interacting with the people, and so uh, hopefully, I made the list and uh, we'll be featured on the news again. So that should, that'll be exciting. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. yeah. You know. Yeah, I imagine this year. You know, last year was still a little. You know, obviously last last January still a little bit interesting with COVID. And, yeah. Still, you know, in the still, winter and stuff. I feel like things are finally back to a hundred percent normal. Almost ninety nine. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. say nine. Yeah, maybe ninety five. Because my <laughs> yeah. my copy machine repair guy didn't make it this week because apparently he was exposed last week, and so I'm like, wow, it's, that's true, man. Actually, still actually, a thing, my, dude. I, I like, just uh, <laughs> no, you're right though. I mean, people are still oh. people are still getting it. Matter of fact, I, yeah, I had a but, David Weekly sales guy that I've, I'm doing a contract with for a buyer, and he and he just got hit with it. So uh, yeah, yeah. So you're right now. I mean, it's, so it's still there. It's, yeah, it, you, you know, know, it's it's kind of like the flu now. It's gonna yeah, be, it's going to be part of our lives i guess on some level but not nearly as scary or having as an impact on all of us as it, as it did for and, the last and i respect years. him letting me know regardless of it being covid or not covid if you're sick yeah reschedule you yeah. know i don't want to get sick so right. it's back to it's not about oh it's the covid just if you're if you know you've got an illness you know give yeah. yourself a few yeah, days in the low, house man. lay yeah. low no, no need catch to catch up any, on some netflix yeah no need to get anybody else <laughs> sick you don't have to <laughs> yeah. quarantine but right. you know give yourself four or five days seven days before you know do do big meetings around a bunch of people and shake a bunch yeah. of hands so absolutely. yeah yeah absolutely but yeah no i think mask are off uh the boat shows open like i said the news crews are back out and uh you know it's going to be a big year uh inventory's back like john said They've really done well. Uh, Kenny's real excited. You know, it won't last forever this marriage with the auto show, but for now, they're 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 both digging it. They're you know they're they're working off each other. Yeah, and, it's kind of nice though, man. Two yeah, shows, yeah. one ticket. I, I love mean, it. Bang it's, for the buck, right? It's it's yeah. You know, I think everybody gets a little more bang for their buck, and we get a whole new audience. You know, sometimes it's the same faces every year, and now we've got a whole new audience with the cars that are kind of mingling over to the boat show side, and vice versa. So, I, I've said this before on the show. Not everybody owns a boat, but almost everybody owns a car. That's true. And so, you know, the audience is is is, is much bigger. 
And, uh, you know, yeah, they, they may be there just looking at the new cars coming out, but they're not necessarily in the market to buy a car. But, you know, they go over to the boat side and maybe they're not in the market to buy a boat, but maybe, you know, a, a jet surfboard is something they can throw in that that new Tahoe they were just right. eye- eyeballing next door, yeah. you know. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, no, so we're excited about it. And, um, you know, I think they're expecting, and, and, and Kenny, you know, he's a little more conservative. And so... He's expecting, I think they did over 60,000 attendees last year. Nice. And I think he's expecting 65, 70. You okay. know, he's, he feels comfortable with that. The auto guy, you know, that's co-hosting the event with him, they're expecting 80 plus. Okay. You know, and so he didn't want to, you know, I'm not guaranteeing 80, but like, you know, I, I, I've I been telling people I think they're going to do 80 this year. You know, I think people I are really it, excited man. to get back out there yeah. and. And uh, the show has such a good turnout in general. They just do such a good job promoting it. When me and John were actually up north the other day looking at some property, um, you know, we saw the billboards on the freeway. That's and true, I yeah. And constantly see the ads on social media. And so uh, they do, you know, and they, they've got great artwork and great graphics. And so uh, they just do such a good job promoting it. And, and the, the team that's been running the show for just years, I mean, they, they've got it, you know, they've got it down. So, uh, yeah. And it's, it's been around be, forever, man. Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think we're, uh, gosh, I know, uh, actually, I could, well, I can figure it out pretty quick. But, uh, God, I want to say that the, the maybe the one that the 2020 show was maybe the 57th annual. So, you and, know. And even that's debatable. It's weird because the locations have changed and the titles changed. Yeah. I mean, there was a time where they were doing it. At I think like the, the Coliseum at right. like Rice yeah. or something yeah. like, but and then it you know switched ownership the Al- and the, uh, the Astro Dome Astro Arena, Astro and Arena. I mean, you know, right. so it's um, it's hard to even say when the you know when the boat show like, titles aside, but when they started gathering boats together in Houston, it's probably like sixty seventy freaking years. Right, I mean it's been it's been a long time. Yeah, well, I mean so. I know I, I know I've mentioned before. I actually, as a young lad, had a birthday party at the boat show. Yeah, so that had to be. I mean, I'm I'm fifty now. I guarantee I probably wasn't even ten yet. So. You know, so that's more than 40 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, so and, that's a, you know, and that was definitely at the cool Astro, yeah. Astro Arena for sure back then, yeah. And then I actually, uh, we stumped Kenny one year because I, I, I gave him, a, you know, we were asking him some some good questions. He was a great interview. Yeah, and a great uh, guy. Yeah, and uh, just has so much information and love for the show. But I stumped him because I brought up an old article about this famous, famous fishing guy that actually casted like over the Astrodome or something crazy. <laughs> I'll have to pull this article back up. I remember you talking about yeah, that. Yeah, no, I mean, no, I had the article to back it up. Yeah. Even Kenny was like, I, I, I sent it to him before the show. And he's like, holy crap, I never even knew about that. And uh, But no, it was all legit. This was like Houston Chronicle status, you know. And uh, yeah, somebody did, they broke a world record. I think, like, in the Astrodome, so notorious for, like, world sure, records. Sure, everything's bigger big, in Texas. Big sporting yeah. events. And, I mean, so many, like, just iconic Eighth things the world. that happened, <laughs> happened there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this guy, like, casted over the Astrodome or, or the longest cast on top of the Astrodome or something. And this was this was at the Houston Boat Show. It was, like, a highlight thing, you know. So it was yeah. pretty, pretty fun. No, I remember as a young kid heading towards Astroworld on the 610 loop heading west. I'd always be excited looking for the first glimpse of the Astrodome. Yeah, yeah. Now it looks like the parking garage for NRG. I mean, it's yeah. like, it, now it and, looks and, tiny and compared may, to NRG maybe, Stadium. Maybe it should be. I mean, they got to do they, they got to do something <laughs> with crazy. it. crazy. I don't want them to tear it down. No. But I, I want them to use it. Yeah. And there's been so many pl- botanical Plans, gardens, yeah. and indoor amusement yeah. park, casino, concert venue, convention center. Con- I mean, blah, yeah. blah, blah. They, they, <laughs> yeah. And none of it's. Aquarium. None of it's yeah. ever stuck. Yeah. <laughs> none of it's ever stuck. Yeah, gosh. But yeah, I mean, it was uh, eighth wonder of the world. It was such a such an impressive sight. And now it's, you know, next to NRG Stadium, which is just massive. I mean, it's. It's just it's, sad that it didn't have that. I mean, it, it was there for years, but some stadiums, they last 100 years, you know, 60, 70 years. They, they've been there a long time. Uh, it just seemed like, you know, the, the Astrodome was built in the 60s and yeah. then like in 2000, done. It was yeah. just like, what happened? Why did it, how did it deteriorate? Yeah, well, like, the so, old multi-purpose so stadiums, yeah. you know, they, 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 you could play football, baseball. They even had famous basketball games in there, uh, Final Fours, obviously the, the old... Uh, famous tennis the, matches. Yeah, famous uh, tennis match, right? You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Billie Jean, Jean King, King and, and King, the, the yeah. Riggs guy. Yeah. The, uh, Lou Alcindor, Elvin Hayes, U of H versus UCLA back in 68, Huge I think. Rodeo 
concerts. Yeah, just, yeah. Like first time huge performers, like you know their debut at the Astro oh, yeah. for the rodeo. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah. No, so many. But the the multi sports stadiums, you know, as you know, as as time went on, you know, every every uh, franchise owner wanted a a stadium built specifically for their sport. You know, specifically yeah, for football yeah. or baseball. And or they what. all got it. They all got <laughs> they it. All, yeah. At some point. Yeah. yeah. They all got it. Yep. Yep. They and all those did. all those stadiums besides NRG. Uh, and I mean, not that Toyota Center, but you know, it's crazy to think how long Toyota Center and uh, Minute Maid have been there at this point. I mean, they're they're you know at at you know, they got quite a few years under their belt. You yeah, know? yeah, they do. Yeah, I mean, I guess uh, Minute Maid, of course, the old Enron Field. Yeah, I mean, I guess yeah. that late nineties. I think yeah. it's probably about yeah ninety eight. Yeah, 90, that sounds about yeah, right. Yeah, I actually went to the last Astro game, Astros game in uh, my wife and I in uh, in the, in the Astrodome. And yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah I remember yeah. going to that. Yeah. I remember going to him as a kid. Oilers games and Oh yeah, games. Yeah. yeah. Definitely went to a couple of Oilers games, some playoff games, some old U of H games back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Um yeah, yeah, lots uh, of And then Toyota Center wasn't a few years after uh, right around yeah. when, when Minute Maid took over Enron Toyota Center. Yeah, came Toyota Center's play. probably the newest you know, two thousand. Yeah, well, know, actually stuff. the newest is actually I guess NRG probably but Well, well actually I'm yeah, not sure. Yeah, actually, I mean that's a good I, point. Yeah. Because obviously the Rockets, you know, they're the championship years were at the old Summit, now Lakewood Church, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. right there in '59. So yeah, the Toyota Center, and I've been to I've been to a couple games there. I really have not been to a lot of events at Toyota Center yet. I've been to a couple, but not a, yeah, lot. Not I don't, a lot. I don't go yeah. to like tons of concerts and stuff like that. Yeah. Even games. Actually, but, I've, okay, you but, know, I've, I've been, been a couple in there concerts five or six there too. Times, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. I guess I should I admit that I've seen Nickelback at the two. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh gosh, yeah. yeah, Nickelback, and I think it was Seether back in the day. Yeah, yeah. what yeah. was part with with other couples it wasn't necessarily. I wasn't the driving force behind it, but they, hey, you want to go? I'm like, yeah, but you know, I went. Sure, yeah, yeah. Put on a good show. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. Oh gosh, but yeah, no, we've been blessed. I mean, we, you know, this whole area, you know, we've got top-notch stadiums, performing arts, you know, the, the zoos, museums. I mean, oh you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, Houston. I think I think it's usually ranked, in, you know, among the top two or three cities as far as performing arts go. You're right, stuff. performing arts and, yeah. and uh, museums, museums, are, big time. There yeah. is a lot of museums yeah. and a yeah, very strong like theatrical scene. Like you yeah. know, I mean, even True. Uh, you know, obviously downtown and. And then there's even, you know, a, a pretty predominant theater over here, right here in Clear Lake. You yeah. Know, at U of H Clear Lake. Yeah, they, U of H Clear Lake, the Bayou some, Theater. Yeah. yeah the Bayou the, Theater, some big shows over yeah, there. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody in the, yeah. in the area looks forward to. And uh, I've been meaning to go over there. I've actually never been to a show there. And every oh, year. Oh, yeah, they're good. Every yeah. year I, I see some of the, the events and I'm like, oh, I want to go. Yeah. And I've never been. So I'm, I'm actually, I'm going to do that this year. No, great. 2023, yeah. I'm going to That's Bayou That's a year. Center, yeah, yeah. Enjoy. And, uh, it's like 10 minutes from here. I mean, right. what, what am I waiting for? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, last time I was over there was actually, uh, I guess November 11th for voting. That's I think, okay. where, I, where I cast my ballot was at, at a U of H Clear Lake. So okay. yeah. Okay. And, and man, it's so cool to see that campus. It's just, man, they've blown, blown up. Yeah. up. It is, uh, always been tucked away in the woods yeah. and kind of small and when they just kept adding buildings and then they really added some buildings and they, they opened up the lot and. Now they've got a. Now it's four year. It's a four year college. It used to be kind yeah. of more upper level, kind of more of a commuter school for uh, juniors, Masters, seniors, or, and advanced. Yeah, yeah advanced, advanced degrees, or, or lots junior, of yeah, yeah, lots of advanced but degrees, now MBAs, they do and stuff. Yeah, now yeah. there's there's freshmen. I mean, you know, and they've got a whole. You know, uh, my my son was in a, a basketball league. I guess it was the last summer. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Well, this past summer. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, this past summer. Uh, well, last year. Um, and I, would never been in the, the, the gymnasium in the, the whole, uh, I guess we'll call it the health center gym for the students. Yeah, they got a new gym there. It's sweet. Like, yeah. It's, wow. it's pretty yeah. nice. Yeah. Actually, uh, it gives yeah. lifetime a run for its money. Right? I mean, no, dude, it's it, nice. It's one yeah. of those, it's kind of like, um, the gym in South shore yeah, the fitness center where in South you shore. can see the people like working out with the big windows yeah. and it like no, hangs nice. over. It's like, Whoa, yeah. that, that's a, yeah. that's a facility. No, it's yeah. quite the facility. Yeah. Heck, I was very yeah. impressed. Yeah, I mean the campus has come a long way. It used to be just a couple buildings, you know, the Bayou building and a couple other buildings, and just yeah, the Bayou building surrounded in the back, by woods. Yeah, and now the, it's like an administrative building in the front. Yeah, you know, yeah. And, and now I mean, there's now probably six, yeah. seven buildings. Yeah, I mean, dorms, you know. student apartments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's there's incredible. a whole performance lab. Yeah, no, it's it's pretty impressive. Yeah, University of Clear Lake has really grown. 
Yeah, I guess they called it downward expansion, adding the uh, sophomore and freshman level courses yeah. and you know, becoming yeah. a, a full four-year. You know, it used to be real big with aerospace. A lot of uh, people that are working at NASA and within the, in the aerospace Boeing community. Boeing and stuff. Yeah, yeah, they, they, would advanced advanced their, they'd yeah. Degrees, um, and, you know, they would go and get advanced degrees. You know, and a lot of people would get their MBAs there. Yeah. You know, master's in business administration. Actually, my brother-in-law did. Uh, You're right. A lot of MBAs there. Yeah, yeah. yeah for so, sure. You know, they were so big it's, into it's that. always been a prestigious school, but, you know, but it was kind of more of a, upper tier um you know advanced degrees and for finishing out your your you know your your career um not a lot of entry level courses yeah, you know yeah, so yeah right. yep yeah and it's just literally right you know just uh you know a couple miles from where we're talking right now yeah it's thriving like you said it used to be a little slower it was a commuter school you know like there wasn't as many people walking around you know yeah. uh, a lot less classes now just i mean the their their class no, the professors just everything they got going on i mean you, you go over there now and it's 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 you know it's hustling and bustling, man. Yeah, it's as you alluded movement. to, I, yeah. I think the uh, the building footprints probably quadrupled. You yeah, know? yeah, no, definitely. No, it's it's a, it's a we've we lost a lot of trees. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there was a few trees. Like, yeah, yeah. it's a highly wooded area. That yeah, is, that so is, that's the one downfall to uh, to growth. Sometimes you lose trees, but but you know. there's a lot of trees. There's over still there. a lot of trees, so and there's still a lot of wild. You know, and it's right up against the largest urban nature preserve. It really in America. is. Yeah, and I yeah. mean. There's the Armand Bayou Nature Center borders the uh, borders U of H Clear Lake, you know, and there's there's it's the literally the largest urban nature preserve in America. Yeah, you know, yeah. So, there's uh, there's a lot yeah. of a lot of land and water and trees over there. Still, oh yeah, so, yeah. You no, know, we're we're I'll, still a very green it. area. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. Well, man, Houston Dude. Automotive Show, January twenty fifth, twenty sixth, twenty seventh, twenty eighth, and twenty ninth at NRG Center. You can buy your tickets online. Uh, you know, if you get them right now, their general admission is fifteen dollars until Wednesday, January twenty fifth. It's twenty dollars then during the show dates. So definitely uh, take advantage of that discount. Go ahead, get your tickets now. And if you cannot make it to the Houston Boat Show, or you want to go to both boat shows, uh, or you happen to live up on the north side and you can't make it down into the city, definitely go check out the Conroe Boat Show. The Conroe uh, Boat yeah. Show, February 3rd, 4th, and 5th at the Lone Star Convention Center. So that's the, the following weekend, yeah. so the next so weekend. The, yeah. So the, basically the next two uh, two weeks, weekends, uh, you know, nothing but boat shows around that's here. That's it, man. Yeah. yeah. Like you said, two is better than one. You know, and come yeah. by the booth and uh, the Jet Surf Houston booth and uh, check out the uh, you know what all Jordan has to offer. Say hi to Jordan. Yeah, yeah, and say hi to John because he will be there as I'll, well. Yeah, I'll be we up will there. Be, some, uh, yeah, yeah. On uh, next Wednesday, we'll yeah, be we'll... doing a live broadcast at the Houston Boat Show with Kenny Lovell. We're super excited um, to to bring it back where it all started, man. Right. And uh, yeah, so uh, I'm super excited to have you up there and uh, look forward to it. Awesome. No, I look yeah. forward to it. We look forward to uh, like like Jordan said. Uh, catching y'all next week. Uh, we'll actually be on ro- on location at the at the Houston Automotive Show, uh, broadcasting live from there. And uh, kind of like Jordan mentioned, uh, where where it all started back in the day. Yeah, absolutely. Well, on that note, John, dude, glad to come on the air with you tonight, man. Got to tell these people about all the all the boat show action and uh, tune in next week, man, to hear us go live, dude, at the show. Awesome. Hey, thanks for listening. All right, bye. It's Weekends on the Water. Thanks for listening to today's show. The official podcast of the waterfront capital of Texas. Sponsored by Water. Water. Much better than drinking sand. Weekends on the Water. No, we must make you Weekends on the Water. With Jordan Davlin of Jet Surf Houston and Scene Magazine publisher John Ennis.